Since Israel's onslaught against Gaza began, Keir Starmer's Labour Party has supported the position of the Conservative government as it has allowed Israel to get away with murder. When predominantly Muslim councillors resigned, a party source boasted that they were shaking off the fleas. Shadow ministers who oppose the slaughter have been sacked or resigned and even been threatened with being purged altogether. Not an empty threat. Two Labour MPs have had the boot, one for calling for peaceful coexistence between Israelis and Palestinians, the other for describing Gaza as a genocide on the day the highest court on earth put Israel on trial for alleged genocide. It gets worse. I'm now going to speak to Martin Abrams. He's a Labour councillor. Well, that's how he's elected. He's Jewish. He's been a family friend since the 1990s. He's a lovely bloke who's far more principled than the dead-behind-the-eyes West Wing wannabes who now treat the Labour Party as a personal career ladder. He's just been given the boot by his local Labour council group in Lambeth, London. So he's been given indefinite suspension, along with disciplinary action against three other councillors, one of whom is a black councillor of the Windrush generation. Why? Because they voted for a ceasefire. I start by asking Martin about his family background and how he got involved in politics. Hi, Owen. So, uh, and good evening to all your viewers. So, I was brought up in a in a very political, very Labour uh, Jewish family in Tameside in East Manchester. And um, actually, one of my first memories was going on a miners' strike march with with my mum and dad. So, the, you know, the Labour movement and the Labour Party has um, been in my blood for the best part of four decades, and um, you know, I've got parents that have been committed members of the Labour Party for the best part of 45 years, um, been Labour Party activists for all that time, campaigning for Tom Pendry MP. And, and you know, I'll never forget um, the, the look on my mum and dad's face following the, the crushing election feat in 1992 when um, when Neil Kinnock um, lost to the, the Tories and, 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 and those kind of memories remain with me. And, you know, I'm not I'm not kind of here to prove my Labour Party credentials, but, you know, I am I am Labour through and through. And, you know, I have been brought up within within the Labour movement. And uh, and, you know, it was actually one of the proudest moments of my life um, to be elected as a Labour councillor in, uh, in Lambeth uh, at that time. And uh, and um, you know I'm, I'm I'm keen to to continue uh, serving the the residents despite what has happened over recent days. Explain what has happened because supposedly now national level Labour was supposed to have backed under pressure from the SNP and immediate what they would then rephrase as in, in, immediate uh, humanitarian ceasefire. They stripped out collective punishment that would mean actually doing something like arms reviewing arms sales that kind of thing. But but what? What the hell happened? What what motion did you vote for, and why the hell have you been suspended? So you know that obviously every council has different timings for their full council meetings. Um, we after the, the the horrific events of October the seventh, the first full council meeting we had was a few weeks a few weeks after, and and, and no no motion was brought to that full council. So it was it was glaringly obvious because there is a green opposition in Lambeth. It was glaringly obvious to me and many other councillors that they would be bringing a, a, a ceasefire motion to the next full council, which happened on January the 24th. And, you know, throughout the time building up to that, councillors were asking for, you know, space, a safe space to discuss the conflicts. I know Many councillors are, you know, uh, you know, you're really, really emotionally affected by this. You know, Lambeth is one of the most diverse boroughs in the UK, and many of our councillors reflect that diversity. And, and you know, uh, you know, to see the the horrific events as to what's been happening over the last few months, it's taken a real personal toll, you know, mentally on many of us. And we were requesting a space to discuss it. So hopefully the, the Labour group could formulate a way forward. Personally, I would have liked to have seen the Labour group put forward their own uh, ceasefire motion to essentially outflank the, the the Greens, because no no doubt, you know, there, there was there was a, a little bit of political point scoring um, going on uh, here, as there is in every political space. Um, but the Greens brought a motion or to the full council in January. 
Um, the Labour group um, were told that it was unamendable, which still I don't believe has been explained anywhere clearly enough. Um, uh, uh, and uh, we were then whipped to vote against it in full council. And I uh, and uh, three other councillors broke the whip on that day. And three of us voted for the ceasefire motion and one of us abstained. And, and then what happened? What were you told after that? So, I mean, after that, you know, once you break the whip, then um, an investigation is, is started. And, um, you know, I had to speak to the mm. chief whip. And once the investigation is finished, then um, we were told we all had to come to a, um, a hearing. And this was the most daunting part of, of this entire thing, because the hearing mm. consisted of the entire Labour group, the local campaigns forum, which is the group elected to, um, to you know, um, within Labour to um, select candidates um, uh, 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 um, uh, in, uh, in Lambeth itself, uh, and mm. quite a few Labour group observers as well. So there's about 70 people in the room. And it, 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 it felt, you know, like a bit of a show trial designed to humiliate and shame the councillors that had, uh, had voted for a ceasefire. Um, the, the meeting um, uh, consisted of four separate hearings for the four individual councillors. Um, mine took two hours, in over two hours in total, uh, with about an hour of questioning from uh, members of Labour group and, and members of uh, the Labour group, uh, the, the Labour cabinet. Um, and it was grueling and it was it was it was humiliating um uh, because um you know it it, it 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 really was a deeply unpleasant experience and then after that there was a vote amongst the labor group and um my personal case i was suspended indefinitely well i mean when you say kind of grueling and humiliating what what kind of questioning what was the and what was the tone what was the kind of approach they had well, I mean, firstly, you have to listen to the 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 the, the whip's report following the investigation, and you know, it it, it really paints a picture of they they really tried to paint a picture of me in particular as you know as as, as someone that, that that did not deserve to be a member of Labour group and that should be uh, should face the highest sanction. Um, you know, I've I've worked tirelessly to represent my local residents since being elected. Um, and it's it's hard work. I'm not going to lie. You know, I've got a young family, um, got a full time job, um, but I've 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 really respected the role of a councillor, and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident that my residents would actually um, agree with that as well. You know, I've taken the approach as a local councillor to be accessible, to be engaging. Um, you know, hundreds of resident visits, you know, uh, uh, dozens of councillor surgeries, telephone calls. I've been to visit, you know, community groups. I've really embraced the role of a councillor. Um, and, you know, it, it, this this uh, this uh, um, hearing really painted a picture that that um, that, that was you know, almost entirely negative. And um, it was, it was a humiliating experience. And, um, you know, the one thing that um, I did not do was uh, say that I would, um, I would vote for, uh, say that I uh, would not have voted for the ceasefire motion if history would repeat itself, you know, because um, I tried to explain that this was a, a, a vote of conscience for me based upon my, my uh, Jewish background and um, you know my beliefs and humanitarian beliefs, um, uh, but that wasn't uh, that wasn't accepted as a justification for breaking the whip. You know, Owen, you yourself know full well that what we're witnessing in Gaza is one of the greatest crimes of our age, and it's being played out in real time. And as a parent of two young kids, it's um, it's very difficult to watch that being played out. When there's so many uh, so many children suffering and seeing images of killed or maimed children has oh. taken a real personal toll on my mental health and i tried to explain that to the, to the labor group but they didn't seem to accept that as a justification i mean you know you were you faced this disciplinary action as a jewish labor councillor i know as well a uh, a councillor from the windrush generation a very respected anti-racism campaign has fought for the windrush 
uh, the victims of that terrible injustice was also beaten out. I mean, what does it say about the modern Labour Party beating out Jewish Labour councillors, Windrush generation councillors, because they voted against the onslaught against Gaza, which is killing tens of thousands of people, including well over 14,000 children? I mean, it's the will to an upside I mean, down. I don't know. I mean, we're living in a topsy-turvy world, aren't we, Owen? And, you know, there's a distinctly authoritarian approach being taken by this um, Labour Party because, you know, if the boot was on the other foot, you know, if we were uh, living uh, between, you know, 2015 and and, 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 uh, and 2019 and, you know, um, the previous leadership were suspending black and Jewish councillors for voting, you know, uh, for something like it's this, there, there would be there would be outrage. You know, it would probably make the six o'clock news. Um, but as it happens, you know, the, you know, the, the wider media aren't hugely interested in this um, because the current leadership, Keir Starmer, seems to get a free pass at every given opportunity. And it is it, is, it doesn't feel like there's a fair playing field um, uh, at the moment. And it's it's people on the left like myself that are, are are really uh suffering as a result you know we've seen dozens and dozens of councillors resign over this conflict you know we've seen um we've seen dozens of um mps break the whip during this conflict and you know they've been uh, sacked as a result before i ask my final question um you know i've been writing and so talking about germany i've been interviewing for example german jewish activists there who pointed out that a third of those, and research has shown that a third of those who have been arrested or uh, been deplatformed are Jewish over Gaza. Um, and, you know, you've just had Yuval Abraham, who I've interviewed, a brilliant Israeli Jewish journalist who spoke at the Berlin Ali Film Festival, condemning the atrocities, the horrors of what the Palestinian people are going through, denounced by the non Jewish Berlin mayor as, an, as for anti Semitism and other German media outlets for being anti-Semitic, and then had a hate mob come to his family's home trying to violently target his family. I mean, you can see that playing out there, but it seems here as well that there has been actually a disproportionate number of Jewish people who have been targeted in some way, including in the Labour Party, for speaking out um, against the injustices currently going on in terms of the Palestinian people. I mean, it's remarkable. It is remarkable, and you know it's it's both it's both incredibly depressing, but um, also incredibly inspiring to see just how many Jewish people are coming out to stand up against um, and speak out against the atrocities that we're seeing in Gaza. I mean, you know, we've seen huge and increasing numbers on the Jewish bloc on the national um, Palestine marches. You know, we've we've seen groups like Jewish Voice for Peace and Namod, you know, really taking uh, leads in, in in that sort of communal space. And you know, I'm proud to be a a, a a member of some of those groups as well, because there has to be a space for uh, Jewish voices that that want to speak out and shout and scream about what is what is almost certainly a genocide being perpetrated in Gaza right now. And the fact that many Jewish people are then being sanctioned or persecuted essentially as a result of them speaking out is just simply not acceptable. And it's incumbent on mm. us as Jews within that space to keep speaking out. You know, that is the very least we can do. You know, I, I, I was brought up, I mean, you know, being taught about my, my ancestors who were basically persecuted in the pogroms of Kiev and came to this country as as refugees you know i was always taught to stand up against um oppression and stand with the oppressed so for me you know when people say never again when i say never again i mean never again for everybody and you know you, you, there is simply no space or justification for any silence around the the, the genocide that's being committed in gaza at the moment and that, very finally that's what i was going to ask you a lot of people will look at all over the Western world and beyond, people who are being sacked, deplatformed, arrested, suffering legal consequences, um, you know, demonized in the media, uh, threatened in various ways for speaking out. And a lot of people might look at that and think, not for me. I, I can't speak out. I don't want to I don't want to take the risk. What would you what would you say to those people given what we're seeing in Gaza at the moment? I mean, I understand that. 
you know it is um it is you know personally and professionally um very very difficult but I'll go back to what I said before. What we're seeing now is one of the greatest crimes of our age, and history will judge those that speak speak out, and history will judge those that remain silent. And that is exactly uh, where we are at the moment. So, uh, you know, personally, I've suffered the consequences of taking that stance. Um, um, you know, I'm going to keep speaking out. I'm not going to be cowed in any way, shape, or form, and I will use whatever platform I have to keep doing what I can, you know, the, 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 the repercussions for me uh, are, are, are nothing compared to the suffering, the pain and the loss that people are facing in, in Gaza as we have this conversation. So it's incumbent on all of us to, to keep speaking out in any, any which way, shape or form and, and, you know, keep showing that there are voices that, that will be bold enough to do that. Amen. Well, I'm very proud of you. And I think everyone watching and listening to this will be very proud of you as well. Um, and history will be, I think, can be can be a damning judge. And I think it will be beyond damning for those who are complicit in this. And I just always say to people, people look back at terrible injustices and think, I would have been on the right side during McCarthyism or all these other terrible things that happened in the past. I would have been on the right side. I would have spoken out. Most people weren't. Most people didn't speak out. And the few who did were often attacked. But whose side would you rather be on? And I think, you know, that's the lesson from history. And I hope people look at your example and they're feeling emboldened to speak out. Um, so it's a big honor. Please, everyone watching or like, uh, listening, do share this video, press like, subscribe. Um, but a massive uh, thanks to Martin, who, um, as I said, showed courage and leadership. Um, and history will damn those who have suspended him. And people like Martin will be remembered in all the best ways. So cheers, Martin. Thank you, Aaron.